Every 10 minutes, another person gets added to the national waiting list for organ transplants. That's according to Donate Life America. More than 116,000 people are on that waiting list. In honor of National Donate Life Month, we took a closer look at how the issue is affecting Southern Arizonans, specifically those awaiting kidney transplants. We got that insight from transplant surgeon Dr. Tan Ji at the University of Arizona College of Medicine, and Jennifer and Dan Vandevort, a couple with first-hand experience. I was originally diagnosed with a condition called thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, or TTP, back in 2003, and it actually resulted in the loss of my kidneys and also a stroke. Not big and vicious either. Dan spent several months on dialysis. Then his mother offered to donate one of her kidneys. They were a match and underwent surgery in Phoenix. It was a success until Dan's blood pressure started to increase. That kind of caused problems with that transplant, so my renal function went down gradually over the next 14 years. And um, eventually I got to the point where um, I, I was going to need it to either to go back on dialysis or another transplant. And that's uh, basically when Jennifer decided that she wanted to check the uh, program for being a living donor. And she actually matched out very well, too. And eventually we uh, did that transplant as well. And everything's going very well so far. And when was that transplant? That was uh, last August. And they're just darling. I mean, not as good as ours, of course, but. Jennifer, when you started considering um, donating your kidney, what was going through your mind? Wow. Um, first off, I wasn't even sure if it was going to be an option. You know, it was, were we a match? What, I had no idea what the process was. I'm like, well, I know my blood type is A negative. I'm like, hey, honey, what's your blood type? He says, well, it's A positive. I'm like, oh, I don't know if positive and negative makes a difference. Apparently it doesn't. I swear I never asked what her blood type was when we were dating. <laughs> <laughs> it just happened to match up. It just happened to match up. So then, you know, Dan got through the process to actually be listed, and that's when I was able to start my process just to see, am I an option? Dr. G, Jennifer, of course, mentioned blood type. That's what are right. some factors that are taken into consideration when making a match? Well, many things. You know, first of all, blood type is important. I mean, uh, blood type had to be compatible for a successful transplant, but it's not necessary. They are programs that uh, attempt to do an ABO incompatible transplant, but with some risk. The other thing is the uh, antibody in the recipient. There would be a situation that the antibody uh, in the recipient was against the potential donor, and in that case, uh, the rejection is a risk. So there are many things. Uh, the other thing is a family history, genetic defects. Uh, some uh, kidney problem can occur in the family. Sometimes we do discourage a family member to donate. Diabetes, hypertension, that tend to run in the family too, so many things. So suffice to say, typically I would tell the potential recipient or the, or the donor that uh, led us to make the decision for you. And how many people are on the transplant list in Southern Arizona? Um, and are most donors coming from people that are, you know, in the family or friends or people that are known? So, uh, you know, obviously in our program, um, I, I think we have about um, slightly less than 100 people currently active on our, our kidney transplant list, but that list is uh, dynamic, uh, can uh, uh, increase and decrease, depends on our transplant activity. In terms of living donor, in southern Arizona had not been a, a predominant mode of the transplant here compared to, say, Phoenix. However, look around the country, we also observe a trend that the living donor rate had been decreased in the last 10 years. That is very difficult to understand. There's a theory about economy, there's a theory about um, healthcare reformations, and Suffice to say, um, the public awareness is very important. I mean, people have to be aware of there's such an option as a living donor, just like what Jennifer has said. You know, if you never thought about it, you would never even attempt it. And Dan and Jennifer, how did the surgery go for both of you, and how are you feeling today? It went very well, very well. Yeah, I think we recovered for maybe two weeks afterwards. You know, yeah. kind of slow, but it, it all came back pretty fast. Yeah, it is major surgery. You know, there are things to consider because it is, you know, they're removing an organ. Um, I have heard that it's more difficult or challenging for the living donor to recover. I didn't experience that. I bounced back. The one thing I would really recommend to people seeking or, or thinking about this is really just get your eating spot on. 
get yourself in the most healthy that you can possibly be. Don't let that be a limitation, but make that a focus before you go in there because the more healthy you are, the easier your recovery is. Have your network together. Have your family, your friends around you because the more love that you have around you, um, the more support you have just around you, even on the periphery. That will help you with your, with your process, with your journey, with your recovery. Dr. G, is there anything that you want people to know that are maybe considering donating an organ? So first of all, there's a lot of helps for potential donors. I mean, uh, uh, any transplant center, they will have a mentoring program, you know, would have someone like former donor like Jennifer to uh, guide them through the process and listen to some of the uh, uh, experience. And uh, uh, around the uh, nation, uh, the UNOS had a website called the Transplant L uh, Life uh, can also help. And then the uh, uh, National uh, Kidney Foundation uh, Arizona chapter also provides some uh, assistance as well. And Dan, what was your reaction to hearing that Jennifer was interested in, in donating her kidney to you? Um, well, I was really very humbled and I wasn't even expecting it. You know, even though she's my wife, I don't think she should necessarily need to give me a kidney, but um, it, it, it's very, very humbling. Good girl. Thank you. He was oh. um, encouraging, but didn't want me to have to go through it. Didn't want to have to watch his Good wife um, go through the, the potential negatives or go through the pain of actually it is a, a major organ donations, a major surgery. He didn't want to have to have me go through that for him. I said, well, you know, I'm an option. I'm here. Let's just take care of and go through this together. Well, thank you so much to you all for coming in. Thank, thank you. you.